Oh, I'm uh, almost 50 years old now. That is a circus, and, uh, circus midget. Old man, yeah. And background was in uh, IT for 20 plus years. Now retired. <laughs> good, good. I wonder. I'm sorry, but the number you have reached is no longer in service. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. All right, you guys were going out dealing with evil spirits and came to Christ at some point. How did that happen? I don't know, but I think I came to Christ a long time before that. I, well, what started the, what started us on the whole gig on starting to do the digging around and trying to prove certain things, certain aspects of the paranormal was um, the death of uh, of, of uh, Wonder's brother. Oh, man, you just hit that on the nose. I was just going to say that. For all of you who don't know, we're all JG-53, we're World War II squad, and we've known each other for a long, 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 long time. Yeah, so that's that's what started it was... Um, with us was well before well that's not exactly what started it but that's what started, started with the whole time I saw and I talked to you on the phone from up there at my brother's when he was in the hospice house dying and what I saw up there just that got me going man remember it was it was crazy because I was having at the same time I was doing a lot a, a ton of praying and I was getting visions about what was going on with uh, Jav and uh, and uh, Wonder there and it was, um, I was telling uh, Wonder about keeping an eye out and listening to what his brother had to say. And I told him, I says, they're coming. I says, they're already there. It's not that they're coming, but they're already there. He pointed up, man, just, uh, in fact, it was the night before he died. He was in his own world. And he pointed up and he says, they're here. And all I could do is say, well, they're here. Go with them. They're here for you. Uh, you don't have to worry about me. I take care of myself. And the following night at uh, oh, late in the evening, he passed on. And then, and then after that, it was probably about, I'd say a month or so after that, uh, Wonder and I, we kept talking about, um, actually, we were watching different did, paranormal shows. Yeah, yeah, actually it was about five months when I start, we started doing it. But we had been and, talking about it, talking about it. <laughs> and then when and, we did it, man, it was a whole new ball game. Woo! Well, yeah, I have an engineering background. And I would get upset watching the different paranormal shows and looking at the equipment they were using or how they were using it. And I was like, you know, you can do a controlled setting, especially with the one product, uh, SB7, Spirit Box 7. And they would use a cheap little handheld speaker and blare it with a bunch of static in the background and then trying to guess at what was coming through, if it was a spirit communicating or whatnot. And I had the idea. I thought to myself, I says, what if I were to purchase one of those SB7s? I says, what I'm going to try to do is debunk it. I'll take that thing, line it out into a Bose sound system, and then I'll take and take and line it out as well into my computer and record it in professional <laughs> audio recording software. So I'll be recording it and playing it back at the same time so I could go back and listen to it on the recording and as well as hear it live. So the first thing I did after receiving the SB7 was I tried to debunk it. I would take it and try the different settings on it. And I noticed on TV they'll set it to what I call a really slow millisecond setting. So it'll be 350 milliseconds or higher up to 650, 750 and you'll hear it when they're running it and it'll go click 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 like you'll hear that that click and i says you know what i says there's just too much room for error right there even if it is 200 you know 350 milliseconds <laughs> which is fast and so i took the sb7 set it for the fastest setting which i want to say was 120 milliseconds or something where it does basically um it'll do 10 frequency scans a second so for one word or any a simple, you know, one word or a sentence would be theoretically impossible for that to happen while you were scanning all of the different channels. And I'm guessing you found something. Yeah, after playing with that shortly after, 
um, I'll never forget the first thing we were doing, and it was with Wonder, and I had it all set up, and I had Wonder listening live, and Wonder says, do you think we can talk to my brother? Do you think we can talk to Jeff? And we did, I'll never forget, we did a prayer, and we were sitting there, and then I'll never forget that SB7 was running, and we have the videotape, we have the, uh, the video of this recorded, and all the audio. And we were, you know, the SB7 was running, and there wasn't a word, nothing coming through that thing. And I'll never forget when Wonder and I were praying, and we says, as you know, can you let Jav come forward? And um, we're just using Jav as a cover name for now, and um, and come forward and and talk to us. And <laughs> hey, Wonder, why don't you tell them what happened? The only part I can remember out of that, man, it's stuck in my mind forever. What's the we first asked for? He said, I, uh, I love you, David. Yeah, mm -hmm. that just blew me away because it was in his voice. It was the craziest thing was the first thing that happened was we were both sitting. I was sitting there, and I was sitting on the chair next to the speaker. So, like I said, nothing was coming through. And then as soon as we asked if he could if he could come forward and stuff and if Jeff you know if Jeff could could talk, remember when he goes Jeff goes yep just like he used to do. Yeah, that, that, it scared me so idea. bad. I fell off the chair. I was. He just said his voice. Every he just says yep. I mean, I'll Man, never oh. forget that. Man, my whole body was electrified. And you moved on from there into going to uh, demon hunting or alien hunting? We, yeah, we started doing some paranormal stuff and then uh, started doing other sessions where I started getting reckless, not using it for anything, I would say, like in a good way, where the only time we used it prior to that we were just to prove certain things and to help other people. And then when we got bored, we started to kind of do it. I would do it a lot on my own and just record the sessions. Um, one of the many investigations by myself. They say don't do it, but I I've, I've never been in a place where I was frightened. Yeah, and some of the craziest things I've documented, and we'll have to get off to pull the videotapes up and stuff. We'll get them posted up. Is where I had um, spirits would just directly communicate with you in full sentences give you their names um one of the craziest things i've had happen was they went from talking through the sb7 spirit box coming through the bow speaker where it's it went from that to just being in the room and a clearly audible voice that was not was that was also captured it wasn't captured coming out of the speaker or on the sb7 track going into the computer on the recording software and the only place the voice was captured was on the video camera audio. <laughs> so <laughs> that tells you, you know, when you look at that and you see what happens where you're, you're talking, going from one frequency, and then all of a sudden it's in the room with you. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> and you can feel it. Like I, like when you see these, these paranormal shows on TV and stuff and they talk about the energies and those types of things, it's, it's, it's all real. Well, that's you why can you guys, feel it. That's why you guys got out of it. Right. Completely. Absolutely. I well, wouldn't do. Me, I, I'm still a paranormal investigator up here in the city of California. Yeah, I don't do anything to do with the paranormal at all. I just do. Um, the only thing I'll do now is just tell people what happened and my experiences in dealing with it. Yeah, I've been investigating for two years now. So I'm guessing you guys think it's real. <laughs> oh, it's a, yeah, it's a beyond real. Like, I mean, I, you, I can, not only can I prove, you know, what these, what was going on and what, what had happened scientifically, but, um, so can a lot of other investigative teams that I've been watching. It's, it's, they seem to be catching more and more evidence these days, but it's all too real. Yeah. I mean, what, what we can't see is more real than what we can. I'll just, I know that for a fact. I think uh, my first investigation that really caught my eye was with, remember, I can't, I can't divulge the uh, address of that because client confidentiality, but there's a house over here, it's a Victorian house built back in 1900. The story behind it was the family was rich, 
They had children that were, had mental disorders. So whenever a company would come over, they'd take them outside and put them in the cellar, which was probably no bigger than six by eight, around that, that size. And it was dark down there, no lights or nothing at the time. And they also put them down there for punishment. So the children, to my imagination, would be every time they, they would be thrown in the basement. They, they couldn't understand why they were thrown in the basement. Well, anyway, I did an EMF sweep with my K2 meter. And that's uh, see if there's any type of power uh, in the room that, that, was, that was putting off. And there was absolutely nothing. It was zero, 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 zero. So I sat down the K2 meter, stood back with my camera, and Karen started talking. But Karen, for the first time in my life, ever saw her actually get mad and, and cuss out a spirit uh, or whatever. When she started doing that, that K2 meter pegged red. And I've never seen it peg red before. And it did it like it was angry. During that time, I started snapping pictures around the room, and I caught a dark mass shadow coming down behind one of our investigators in the doorway, coming down. The reason I could tell it was a, it was a shadow, and it wasn't off us because where the lights were, there's no way it could be a shadow. And it was coming down the wall and covered the pipe and everything. So it, it, the outline was like, oh, my God, this thing is real. This was right in there with us. Anything could have happened. No, that, that, that was you know, pretty weird. What made you guys get out of the uh, spirit chasing? The what? What made you guys get out of the uh, spirit chasing? I'm not. Well, for me, yeah, for me, it was the fact that I realized what it what what it was doing. Like basically, anytime you're doing it, you're just inviting. You're basically walking in uncharted waters and the how do I want to put this is you can only cash your ticket so many times is what I want to say like you got to be careful in what you ask for um like I said I started out with the intent I was using I was always using God for protection and then I got careless and then when I started to really go through by, the audio tracks by God you mean Jesus Christ Jesus Christ and then it went. They went from doing what they were telling me on the SB7 to when I quit doing the SB7 sessions. It went into physical manifestations. Basically, I would see them walking around. I'd see the shadow figures. I would. I would have multiple things thrown at me. That was probably the most irritating. Um, I mean. The largest thing I had thrown at me was my uh, old racing helmet that was sitting up on the shelf. And it was thrown so hard it came off the shelf and flew and hit me in the back of the neck. Satan hates you. Mm-hmm. So, and like I said, when I was doing the cleanup on the audio tracks from the SB7 sessions, I noticed that there was always this audio in the non-audible ranges that the human ear can't hear. And I always wondered what that was. So I went back and was using subtractual layer subtraction and taking out all the noise and taking those, those, that audio and bumping it up to what we could hear and amplifying it to see what it said. And what I found was what it, what it was was basically you could, it was almost a direct ear straight to hell. You could hear what I would describe as demons, spirits screaming like you've never heard screaming in your life. Yeah, I, I mean, it goes, it goes right great. through you. And they're screaming to be let out. They're screaming for help. You could hear them being tortured and just screaming. It was just the worst thing I'd ever heard. I had one out, out at the cemetery that my... My very first investigation was a local cemetery here. I happened to cap, uh, actually, Concept was the one that found a picture because I, I was running a different monitor, crappy one. And it was a, looked like, you know, the one up here at Sutter Con that you saw that looked like the old miner coming out of the ground? Yeah. Where and you had it. You had, a, this, you had a, like, like an angel or something. There was also what looked to be like a, a good spirit chasing a shadow spirit. Oh, that was a manzanita. 
Yeah. yeah that wasn't uh, Yuba Sutter. But uh, remember, the girl come on and said, hey, if you look down between the trees, you can see the silhouette of somebody. And remember, we looked oh, down yeah, there. Yeah. And sure enough, it was a full silhouette of a person, but there was no people there. Full that was my silhouette. very first investigation. Mm. <clears throat> full silhouette of a virgin? Huh? Full silhouette of a virgin? Full silhouette of a person. Oh. Not of a virgin. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, as far as the orbs go that I have in the pictures of those, they, they, a lot of them can be de debunked as what they call pollen and dust because of the summertime, it was hot at night. But the ones I caught out in Manzanita that I have on my main page, my cover page photo, you can see these orbs, and they're really super bright, and you can see the tracers coming off of them, and they're going upwards, not downwards. I got some going at different angles. And those right there, to, you know, I could, I could feel I, what I was doing. I could just feel the energy coming off of them. It was, it was totally awesome. I have been going to that cemetery since I was 18 years old. I used to, to work out there and, and caretaker and go out uh, for the city of Lincoln and go out and mow and weed eat and take care of the cemetery. So they, they pretty much knew I was back then. And then I stop and, and walk around and visit and pretty much let them know that they're still remembered. Uh, one of the teachers has a family, I'm not going to mention names, but one of the teachers has a family buried out there. We stopped him one day. He's out there drinking down a beer and uh, raking and doing a little shoveling around his family plot. All his relatives from a long time ago buried in that plot. So he's uh, we talked to him for a while. Just go out, kind of like ruminate with old school teachers and friends that show up out there. and Just kind of be calm and stuff. So I decided to, to go out and do an investigation, and I ran into more stuff out there than I thought I would in a what, whole lifetime what, that I've seen even on TV. I mean, what are you, I, what are you investigating with? What am I investigating with? Yeah. Oh, okay, I use a digital camera. I use an EMF K2 meter. I was using the spirit box, but pretty much they just continue to yak at me, call my name, and just carry on and on and on like that. <laughs> Drew Weasel got, got tired, tired of the spirits of harassing him with the spirit box. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what That's it was. What That's why he won't use it. it. And so I use a, I was using my tech cam uh, recorder, really nice recorder, man. I, I picked up a lot of whispering and talking and some real cool stuff. Uh, check this out. This is, this was cool. I just got my new cross, uh, they're, they were blessed uh, in Israel, and they're, uh, 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 what do we call it? Hang on. Crucifixes. And I wore my crucifix that night. And while I was out there, one of the recordings had said, he's wearing his cross. <laughs> <And then Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, I am. And, uh, and, and I, didn't, I don't really ask questions anymore. I kind of like backed off that part. Me and Con had a long talk about that. One. So I just pretty much go in and just kick on the recorder, walk around, take pictures. And they know, and I pray for them when I'm there. And I, I still think you're crazy. crazy. I know. But I mean, I'm, I'm going to go on record, on record right, right now and say, I think you're nuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, Max Bauer Max does Bauer not is. approve of the crucifix, but whatever. <clears throat> Well, it's like Con told me something that really made a lot of sense to me. The cross is a torture symbol. Yeah. The crucifix yeah. is Jesus on the cross to no, show no. what he the did. The empty cross is Jesus' resurrection. The cross with the uh, little emaciated Jesus on it is bad. The the Roman. Of, it's the reminder of what, how he was tortured. Mm -hmm. It's Roman. It's, how he died for us. it's a it's Roman a Catholic symbolism. 
Yeah. Anyways, whatever. Whatever you want to do, Wonder. Yeah. Like I say, to each his own, but I just pray for his protection. Like Wonder says, he goes out there, and basically what he's doing now, he's kind of like an objective observer. Yeah. <laughs> he, he goes out there, and then he does... He does bring up the fact, if he does run into people, he will bring up the fact about how the only way you can combat this stuff. Well, wonder, There's only one way. Wonder is saved, so we can always call on Jesus. Bring the ban hammer band. down. Right. Bam! Bam! <laughs> Bam! Yeah, but At first, I, I thought I was going to gonna be scared. I mean, I thought I was going to be totally terrified. I even uh, My wife would scare me once in a while, and I'd jump out of my boots, but... Uh, it's, it's funny, I, I go in, before I, I even enter a cemetery, even start doing an investigation, I ask the Lord's permission. I ask if it's okay if I go do this. And if it is, uh, please give me the protection. You know, cover me in your heavenly light and love. I'm Make gonna, sure nothing uh, happens to me or my family or my loved ones or my friends, you know. And I'm don't gonna, let them I'm follow me. Interject right here and say that that is the most important thing for all you people who might be listening to this is you have to ask the Lord's protection. He created everything. Uh, he can totally fix whatever your problems are. Period. All right. Can you win? Anyway. Uh, yeah, I always, uh, I don't know, know so much about the armor of God, but all I know is God is the armor and, and he's the protector. He's the one that, that loves us and, and we love him, and he's there. He's there for us whenever we need him. Yep. If yep. you if you have faith, and I carried there for a long time. It's like I told Con, I lost my faith a long time ago. No, look, uh, I, was, I, I was. I don't want to get into the full story on it, but uh, quite a few. My actually, what restored my faith was my brother. Well, I was involved in witchcraft for a long time before I became a uh, Christian abomination. Yep. That's me. Get the steak in the barbecue sauce. <laughs> the witchcraft does work. It works really well. <laughs> really, really, really well. Oh yeah, it does. The adversary wants you to do it. <laughs> there ain't no way I can make 150 grand a year without witchcraft. I mean, period. No. And if people are interested, go look on YouTube I live out here in Los Angeles, and you can go to YouTube and look up <laughs> look up people selling selling their souls to the adversary, aka mm -hmm. Satan, the devil, for yep. profit. And you'll see that you'll see these people lined up, and I'm not joking, lined up to devout devote themselves to Satan and and sell their souls for a price. Yep. Yeah, the adversary, like when, when people think what's what's adversarial influences and stuff like that, it's like I never did notice them until, uh, it, 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 in, like I say, until I, I became extreme, I would say as close as I could with, 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 with our Lord. I mean, honestly, it was like once he opened my eyes, like he says, he'll, you know, he can remove the slivers from your eyes. And once he did, I started to see what was really going on. That was kind of what did it with me in the paranormal I mean, it was just like I said, it got to the point it was crazy. I mean, when stuff is flying around, hitting you right in front of you constantly, um, you know, you're discovering what's on these audio tracks, what these things are saying. And you can hear basically like when you read scripture and it talks about the war going on all around you. I can honestly say that that is so it's so much more real than you would ever imagine. And um Another thing I'd like to point out is um, always use the name. Never be afraid to say it out loud. Don't ever be afraid to ask for help because those angels are all around us all the time. And basically, they can't act unless we ask. So it's um, there's a lot to that. Use his name constantly. Yes. And if you don't believe any of it, you can order one of those SB7s and you can try it yourself. <laughs> but I would advise saying a very good prayer beforehand and hang on to your chair because what you get is, you might not door, be what you asked yeah, for. Once you open that door, it's, there's no going back. You've done opened it. So, so I even so had, had a, the rest of your life. 
one of the things I used to do when I used to do those sessions all the time was I used to close out and say, is there anybody, friends, family, that would like to come through and say anything? And I'll never forget, it was one of the last sessions I'd ever done because it really got me was when my uh, grandmother and grandfather came through. And it was, you know, it's like the names alone are so kind of odd. You know, it, it was um, Emily and Floyd and the voices and everything. When they come through and talk to you, like I say, just be careful when you use, if you do anything like that. And just know that um, if you pray that they're in God's hands, like what you what you read in the scripture isn't a lie. Leave the Ouija boards alone. They are not good. <clears throat> How do you know that what you read in the scripture is not a lie? What I do is I do what basically is what I call like a red letter. Like if you've ever heard of the red letter Bible, where you're looking at God's words. Well, Jesus, yeah. And that's basically what I go by for the most part, you know, as far as religions go. Like I say, I don't see anything bad with religion as a whole. It's, of course, it do so much good and holds up Christianity, but like what the damage the Roman Catholic Church has done and their control and their, and their twerking of so many different things. Why do you say that? There's a lot. They don't want a lot. They don't want us to know. They keep a lot of the scriptures hidden, and they won't acknowledge a lot of the scriptures that are there, including Dead Sea Scrolls and the Book of Enoch. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, and like, even though they don't even believe in ghosts and stuff, and why, why do they have a whole section yeah. built on uh, exorcism? Yeah, we have. We're talking about a a church that has a, an entire division dedicated to fighting demons, and then tells its parishioners that ghosts aren't real. That you don't believe in ghosts except for the Holy Ghost. So what would you call yourself then if you're not a Catholic? I would call myself extremely faithful, a devout follower of Christ and his teachings. But you don't have a church? No, I haven't been to church in probably over 30 or 40 years. Hmm. What about you? What about you? Me? Uh, it's been a little while. So I went to a church down here, and I uh, I don't want to mention the name of it or anything, but I didn't didn't feel welcome there, so I, uh, I haven't been back. I haven't really found one. Um, I'm not much of a big church goer, but I don't believe that the Lord minds if I don't go to church as long as I worship Him best I can. Oh, like I said, the church is in me. <laughs> it's kind of my philosophy I wherever I go to the church is with temples, you. you know? And to me, his, temple, so. his mountains are the temples. The land is his temple. Everything is his temple. Yeah, I have a weird way with that. It's like I always found Christ in the wilderness. It's kind of, it's always a strange thing. But yeah, I've had uh, a lot of... Uh, A lot of different things happen in the wild and stuff when I'd be out on uh, on hiking trips and stuff like that. Well, there you have it. I'm going to go close up I this to, thing. I need to take a break. I'll, uh, I'll be right back. Yeah. All right, Wonder. I'm going to close up this interview with uh, Demon Hunters and uh, yeah that's where they're at and ex-Demon Hunter ex-Demon Hunter yeah I'm not hunting any demons if anything I'll slay them <laughs> alright with that I'm out of here